Can everyone hear me? Okay. So just in case you guys missed what I was saying, I think, I don't think my um, mic was working at that time. My name is Candida Wilshire. I am the TCO counselor. And if you're interested in um, therapy with me, you can always email me at C Wiltshire, which is spelled W-I-L-T-S-H-I-R-E at tcl.edu. And so what we will be doing today is doing an overview of what test anxiety is and coming up with some coping skills. Um, and so I wanted to start out just by um, talking about what anxiety is in general. So um, what anxiety is, is it's the body's reaction to a threat. It's a survival instinct that we have. It's a way that our body is learning to deal with any type of stressors that are happening and come up with ways to either fight or flight, um, either run or, you know, figure out a way to survive. The thing with anxiety is that um, a lot of times the threats aren't necessarily real in the sense of something that's immediately going to harm you. A lot of times it's a perceived threat. Um, and when you have an anxiety and when you have something like a panic attack, what ends up happening is that um, you have to parts of your body that activate. You have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic branch of your brain. Um, and what the sympathetic branch does is gets your body ready for um, fighting. And the parasympathetic is basically what happens when you need to calm yourself down. So um, the brain um, reacts your body reacts and some of the reactions that you do have in your body can include things like um, increased heart rate, um, your skin can get cold, you can get numbing or tingling in your fingers, a shortness of breath, um, you can sweat, and even have some nausea. Um, and so these are all different types of ways that the body can um, react. So what we did cover in the last um, presentation that I, I provided on anxiety was different ways that you could manage anxiety. Um, and some of that included practicing tolerance and um, limiting exposure, improving self-care, connecting with family and friends, and remembering your resilience. And so when we talk about practicing tolerate, tolerating uncertainty, um, that's the ability to basically be okay without knowing the outcome, practicing, um, being patient and waiting, focusing on the present moment, not necessarily looking all the time into the future. Um, limiting exposure, that's really being able to put boundaries on exactly what you're doing, not overstimulating yourself. Um, improving self-care included having a good diet, um, having, you know, good rest, um, connecting with family and friends, that was another way of coping. It was reminding yourself that you're not alone, having a support system there available with you. Um, and then re remembering your resilience is just looking back on other times that you may have felt anxious and learning that you were able to cope with it. So what is test anxiety? Now you've had an overview of what anxiety is, but now what is test anxiety? And a lot of people ask this question and they ask, is it real? Um, so basically test anxiety is real and it's a subset of anxiety. When you hear people talk about um, different types of anxiety, you have like phobias and then you have things like a social anxiety or you know, when people go to the doctor and they have a, what's called a fear of a white coat. They're all forms of anxiety. They're just um, nuanced in what the causes really are. So test anxiety is, it's an educational problem among students that's actually pretty pervasive. So there's prevalence rates are ranging between 10% and 40% of students. And that means that 10, between 10 and 40% of the student body has some sort of anxiety when it comes to taking an exam. They have a fear of it. They look at it as a threat, right? So taking an exam has now become more of a threat than it is as a way to measure success or to measure how much you have been able to um, retain information. 
And with students with the test anxiety, um, they regularly encounter ruminating musings about potential disappointments. I know that's a mouthful, but basically all that says is when you have an anxiety, when it comes to testing, it's just that you're starting to obsess over what the outcome is going to be. And your thoughts now focus on being a, um, and not being able to pass the test. And your focus is not even really on the test itself. So um, what this ends up causing is um, pain, right? So you end up feeling um, very disappointed in yourself and overly anxious, and then you become really excited, right? So now your body is actually functioning if you were being chased by someone or if you were in imminent danger. Your body is reacting chemically in the same way that it would if you were in a situation where you were in um, potential risk of being harmed. Um, so when a person is taking an exam, they start panicking, right? Because now your body has activated that system, that system, which is the fight or flight. And here you are in an exam, in an exam seat, but you are starting to experience what you would experience if you were being chased by like a fox or something. So that's how test anxiety becomes so um, overwhelming. For individuals um, and so it's it's a lot to take in so there are two major portions of test anxiety one is worry and then one is the emotionality of it so what is worry worry is the cognitive test anxiety and the worrying is the part of the um, anxiety that has you obsessing and having destructive thoughts, right? So it becomes a distraction during the test because you're too focused on your dissatisfaction with yourself or those negative thoughts of saying, I'm never gonna be able to pass, I'm going to be a failure, I'm going to you know, fail this test, I fail the class. And then you start to go down this really you know, rabbit hole of negative thoughts. Um, the emotionality is connected to that because then as you start as you start to think so how you think is so how you feel right so now you're having these negative thoughts and now your emotions are getting caught into it and again we are just in a seat we're just sitting in a seat with a test in front of us, but all of these thoughts are coming in because we're panicking and we're looking at this test um, as a threat to our survival and now our emotions are getting involved and that's when you start to see the physical symptoms, your tension, your shortness of breath, your sweating, right? Now you're going into that panic mode. And this is a main characteristic of what happens when a student is dealing with test anxiety. So when we go back to the brain, um, and you're in this seat again. Here I am. I'm sitting down. I'm taking my test and I'm looking at this test that I have now viewed as a threat to my survival. My brain is activated. So I'm in the parasympathetic part of my brain. I'm in a fight or flight mode. I'm thinking either I have to pass this test or I'm going to die, right? I am really catastrophizing in the moment. How is my brain reacting? Well, what's happening is I'm, I'm starting to look at the ways to survive. And so when we go into a fight or flight mode, ultimately we go into a primitive state of mind. We're not thinking clearly. We're only thinking about either running or fighting. And in, in the sense of taking a test, who are you gonna fight? Are you gonna fight the teacher? Are you gonna fight the paper? Like you're so consumed with trying to survive that your working memory is not even able to act. And so that's what happens. That's the phenomenon of having a blank, right? I'm, I just went blank. I didn't know what happened. I was really panicky that I just went blank. What's happening is your working memory has now ultimately shut off. And when you are in a fight or flight mode, your brain cannot think in a more um, complicated way. It can't focus because all of its attention is on surviving this threat. And that's what's causing your blockage. That's what's causing you to go blank. So once you enter a testing room, what the research has demonstrated is that students who have high test anxiety 
always have difficulty organizing their thoughts and recalling and storing information effectively. So even if you had studied them before, ultimately, if you have test anxiety, that is that goes out the window because you're still looking at it as a threat and your body goes into the fight or flight mode. Going back to how you think, self-awareness of an inability to adequately care has been proposed to activate debilitating sex perceptions and behaviors. And what that means is um, when you are aware that you are afraid of the test and that becomes a thing that you are concerned with, you start to behave in certain ways. So the way that you think about your test is the way that you end up in a sense. So if you think of your test as a threat, you're going to avoid it, right? So if you perceive your test as a threat to your survival, you're going to try to avoid it at all costs. And that brings on emotions. So when you get into your test room, now you're feeling all of these emotions of fear and dread, and you're just trying to take the test. And now you're feeling helpless because you're being forced to do something that you have perceived as a threat. And that is the cycle that we want to try to get you out of because viewing a test as a threat puts you into a fight or flight mode and now you're choosing to run, not do it, mind's going blank, I can't do this, I can't do it, right? And that's always going to impair your ability to keep with the testing that's in front of you. You can't get out of testing. It's a part of, you know, the college experience. So what can you do? All right, how do we cope? So the first thing we can do is that you can, you can prepare, right? Everyone knows that you can prepare. Know the material well. There are so many resources here at uh, TCL that are designed to help you be successful. We have the tutoring center, we encourage you to utilize that. That's a resource for you. You are able to sit with someone and, and kind of go over things. Uh, we want to encourage you to recognize your control in the outcome, right? Try to study with a partner, study with the group, focus on the things that you can retain so that you have a sense of control. Try to review your handouts and your notes quizzes, anything that you have that you can review so that you can feel a little bit more prepared when you walk into that door. Also, try to create practice tests. The thing about test anxiety is that you avoid it so much that you don't never get comfortable with it. By creating practice tests for yourself, you start to understand that this test is just that. It's not a threat to your survival. It's not a fight or flight situation where either you stay here and die or you run away to survive. It's something that you can manage and that you do have some control over. The second thing says don't obsess. And when we say that, that's the ruminating thoughts. If you know you have a test coming in, we'll say three weeks, it's not healthy for you to overstudy or to completely immerse yourself into every single part of your day is focused on that test. Once you know the material, once you've prepared, once you've met with the tutors, once you go over these things and you feel like, okay, I do know this stuff, it's important for you not to raise your anxiety level by obsessing over it over and over and over again. Because the more you think about it, the more you're gonna perceive it as a threat and the more you're going to try to over, um, to try to avoid it. And when you finally get there, you have worked yourself up into fearing it so much that then you will experience it, you'll start to experience that blanks, that the, the mind going blank. So some things that we talked about as far as anxiety um, in the overview was self-care. And that's applicable here too. So when you are, um, Preparing for a test, one thing you want to do is avoid any caffeine. Also, you know, eat a healthy meal prior to your test taking. Also, eat a healthy meal prior to studying. Studies have shown that the way your diet and um, exercising and things like that all contribute to having a better um, ability to um, retain information. When you're taking a test, try to slow down. I know it's easy to want to look at the clock and try to um, race to finish in time, 
But if you start to find that you're feeling anxious, it's important for you just to take a deep breath, close your eyes, breathe through your nose, deeply breathe into your abdomen and not just in your chest. I'm, I, I want you to focus on taking a deep breath and pause before you exhale, right? Take a deep breath and pause before you exhale. And when you breathe out, make sure you're breathing out through your abdomen. And as you continue, become of any tension that you may be having while you're sitting there. So focus and see, is my, are, my, are my shoulders tense? Is, is my jaw clenched? Am I holding um, tension in my abdomen? Am I clenching my fist? Am I, you know, what's happening physically? And as you become aware, work to relieve the tension in your body so that you can kind of trick your brain and your body into calming down. So that will help you to slow down your mind, to be more present in the moment, and to regain some sense of control so that you can continue with your testing. I think one of the biggest things that you can do is to plan. And when I say plan, it means plan on not knowing. Even with all of the studying, even with every you know, um, tutor in the world and every study group, there may be something that you just don't retain and that's okay, right? So avoid the expectation that you're gonna know all the answers and that you're gonna be perfect because perfectionism is a delusion, right? There's no way that we can be perfect. And as long as you can focus on the answers that you do know, which is the next one, you go through and focus on the answers that are the easiest. So get those out of the way, right? And by doing that, what you end up doing is you trick yourself into believing like, oh, wait, I got this. Like, okay, I know this stuff. And then you can go back and start to review the questions that you may have had difficulty for. But answering the questions that you know and that you're confident in will help increase your confidence in yourself. Um, read questions carefully so you understand what they're asking. Be patient when an answer won't come to mind immediately. And again, use those relaxation techniques that we talked about, the deep breathing, being still, trying to just calm yourself down relieving some, you know, distractions. I mean, relieving some tensions. The other thing is to try to avoid distractions. So I know that we are so um, technology, uh, technologically advanced and we have these great little, you know, eye watches on our arms and we have our cell phones and we have all these neat little things. But during a test, if you're getting text messages or the group chat is popping, that's a distraction, right? And that can cause you to become unfocused. And once you lose your focus, it's easy to spiral out of control. So if you're going to take a test, I would encourage you to take off the watch, try to make sure that you are focusing on what you have in front of you, and then catch up with everyone later. Like, it's important for you to feel some sense of control. And if you have people calling you or texting you or Instagram is going off, if someone sent you a Snapchat or this is going on in, in Facebook, like all of those things, they contribute to you feeling out of control and that's what we're trying to avoid. As you continue to work through your tests, always make sure that you're telling yourself some positive talk. Instead of stating what you can't do, remind yourself of what you remember. And that goes back to answering the questions that are easiest first, because what it does is it helps you to feel positive. And positive self-talk is an important coping skill because it distracts you from the anxiety producing thoughts that cause you to go blank. Don't watch the clock. Make sure you work at your own pace, work at a steady productive pace, and only look ahead at the test if it helps you to manage your time, if that makes sense. Some additional things. Don't let your brain start working on the next problem before you finish the one that you're working on. I know that you may want to skim through and you have skimmed through if you've gone through and done the questions that you um, know first, but as you go back, just focus on one thing at a time because if you start to look at everything, it can become extremely overwhelming. Um, ignore, ignore, ignore. Ignore the person who's sitting beside you, how fast they're working or if they finish, none of that matters to you. And when you start having physical symptoms of any type of anxiety, 
try to ignore them, try to breathe through them, don't obsess over them. If you start to feel your heart racing, instead of saying, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm having a panic attack, I'm never gonna finish this, right? Don't do that, ignore it and say, all right, let me just take a deep breath in, let me focus on what I know, let me you know, retrain myself to focus on those positive thoughts and let me finish this test. And as always, try to stay focused. If your mind starts to wander, which sometimes it does, just bring yourself back to the center, bring yourself back to your breathing, bring yourself back to what you know, and then finish up strong. Okay, I, that's all that I have <laughs> for today. But if anyone has any questions, please unmute yourself. Um, and tell me anything that you have any questions with. Any comments or anything that you guys feel um, works for you that you would like to share with anyone else? These are some of the references um, that I utilized. And if there are no other questions, I thank you for joining me today. And um, if you guys need me, just uh, again, my um, email is cwiltshire at tcl.edu. I am the campus counselor. And if you um, need to speak with me, I'm always here for you guys, okay? Enjoy your day. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I will speak to you guys later, I guess. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, you're so welcome. Have a good